people are in jail, at least when it comes to homicide. Okay, but it doesn't matter because, again, the left can't stop itself. In corporate America, that ship can't be turned. In the media, they cannot re-steer themselves because they have dedicated themselves to activism. The Biden administration can't turn away from its own radicalism. Yes, the Biden administration is saying we should give uh, less punishments to homicide. Uh, by the way, Joe Biden literally is the reason why there are so many fucking black and brown people in jail. Like, directly. As the architect of the crime bill, like, he's literally the reason why so many people are in jail. And he's now, Ben Shapiro is like, now criticizing that very same guy saying he's not doing enough, that he needs to be jailing even more people. And the criminal justice system, the Black Lives Matter movement can't steer away from its own radicalism. This is how you end up with videos of BLM activists saying that cities will burn if Derek Chauvin isn't convicted. How do you think this is going to play? You think this is going to play in America? You think this is really going to go well for you? Here is a, this BLM activist. If George Floyd's murderer is not sentenced, just know that all hell is going to break loose. Don't be surprised. I mean, she's right. Like... It's not, she's not threatening to do so. You're assuming that she's threatening to do so. Maybe she is, but uh, I fucking talked about this before as well. What, you think I'm going to fucking, you think I'm advocating to burn buildings? No, but I'm assuming that this is going to happen if justice is not fucking served because people have been pushed to a point where, uh, you know, you are not listening to them over and over again. And it's brightest fucking day that uh, an injustice has occurred. And the government is supposed to fucking step in and do something about it. That's how, how the fucking law is supposed to work. Also, um, you know, it, it's really cool when you find like random TikTokers and you go, well, this random TikToker is a BLM activist. And therefore, like, this is the entirety of the Black Lives Matter movement. I love that. I love that. You know who else is on fucking TikTok? Ben Shapiro. People that literally say, like, my quirky uh, uh, fucking eating habits are, are, are should not ever be made fun of because that's ableism. That doesn't mean that they like represent any part of the fucking left. There's no discernible part of the leftist uh, coalition building that uh, that features like, uh, you know, ridiculous rad lip Tumblr shit. OK, it doesn't matter. I can't believe that Ben Shapiro found the entirety of Black Lives Matter at this one uh, random uh, black lady uh, doing a TikTok when buildings are on fire. Okay, so here's the thing. By the way, she didn't even literally say she's going to do that. She's like, I am the CEO of BLM and I'm going to burn buildings. She literally, and it doesn't even, she didn't even need to say that, obviously. But um, no ties or association of BLM for as far as you can uh, discern from the fucking TikTok. Secondly, it's literally one random person. And lastly, didn't even say anything fucking ridiculous. She said what I've said time and time again as well. Of course, people are going to be fucking angry if justice is not served in this instance, and, you know, that shit's going to happen again. Pointing out this whole time, and I think most people with, who have a brain are noticing, is that this Chauvin case is not clear-cut. Not only is it not clear-cut yesterday... Brother, 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 brother. There is nothing more clear-cut. The Derek Chauvin case is literally the, uh, the, the saying the N-word of, like, uh, murder cases, okay? You know how conservatives always say, well, that person didn't say the N-word. How could you ever claim that they're racist? They didn't literally say the N-word, right? You know how, like, that's what they need for evidence to fucking figure out if someone is, uh, you know, a racist? Well, this is literally that, but with murder, okay? Like, oh, well, this is not a clear-cut case, even though, you know, every expert uh, testimony so far has... Uh, shown that uh, he was uh, murdered by asphyxiation caused by uh, Officer Chauvin's uh, knee on his neck. Uh, and also, uh, there was like 25 witnesses that saw and witnessed the entire thing, filmed it. There's numerous different camera angles that you could literally fucking find uh, at any given moment on the internet. Um, the, the police chief is saying that this was uh, inappropriate and murder. The uh, fucking other cops, uh, the cops that hired him, cops that were his fucking... Uh, uh, you know, a, a part of high command have like said that this is uh, inappropriate and, and murder. Like they have already violated the thin blue line. They have already violated the, the, uh, the, the code of conduct, the unspoken code of conduct that the fraternity, the fraternal order of police have. Okay. Which is calling out another cop for murdering a, especially a black fucking, uh, suspect. Okay. Like this is literally, 
this is straight up this is this is unusual okay this is unusual with how clear cut this is the blue wall of silence has been fucking breached so if you look at all of that if you look at all of that and you still turn around and say this is not clear cut well i think that uh there's a puzzle piece that's missing in your brain you you pulled out a piece and you just jammed fucking racism into it and that racism puzzle piece that you jammed into that hole that you left in there is saying, well, you know, this was a deserved murder. Like this person, you know, had it coming for them. Uh, as uh, you know, they were black. They had a criminal record. Like, you know, obviously he was going to get murdered anyway. You know, he was doing drugs. That's what you're doing. That's, that's the only way that you can look at this case and go, oh, I don't know. Yesterday happened to be a particularly bad day for the prosecution in the, in the Derek Chauvin. Yeah. Also, the irony is... Ben Shapiro starts this video by saying more people need to be in jail and then fucking turns around and literally says that we shouldn't be like this prosecution of a murderer is is ridiculous. Like it's so obvious what he's doing. He's like draconian measures for blacks, but not for white police officers that killed them. Like that's literally what he's doing. It's fucking insane. Like, can you imagine? We need more people to be in prison. Also, this person who's uh, on his way to prison because he fucking murdered someone in front of like hundreds of people and the entire world saw it. Well, that person shouldn't be in prison. Everyone else should be in prison. Murder case with regard to George Floyd. There are a bunch of witnesses who were, who were interviewed yesterday and it did not turn out well for the prosecution. In fact, it turned out so not well for the prosecution that one of the witnesses the prosecution called, the defense announced they wanted to recall the witness as a defense witness. That's how badly it went for the prosecution. You know the prosecution is doing a crappy job when they call a witness and the defense cross-examines the guy. And they're like, you know what? We like you so much. We want you back on our side. <laughs> like, that ain't good. The state called a Minneapolis Police Department lieutenant named Johnny Mercil, who's a use of force trainer. Oh, this is great, dude. Ben's like, I could have defended the racist murderer better, okay? I could have done it. I have all the racism and I'm bloodthirsty, but I'm too small, too tiny to actually ever murder someone. I only weigh around 100 pounds. So if I were to stand on someone's neck like that, they wouldn't die. So I can only get my kicks off uh, by, by, you know, the fake defending someone on a legal drama, like I'm watching a legal drama or something. Let me do it. Let me at him. I'll be a part of the defense. I'll be a part of the defense. I'm a Harvard Law, by the way. I, I passed the bar, by the way. And the, and the prosecution asked him a bunch of questions about whether Chauvin was using approved use of force procedures. But... Then Eric Nelson, who is the defense attorney, began asking questions related. He's literally like, I like that three minutes in and he's like, put me in couch, put me in couch. To Mercil's time as a street cop. This is according to LegalInsurrection.com, who's been doing a good job analyzing this on a day-to-day -day level. Nelson asked questions related to Mercil's time as a street cop with a particular emphasis on the tendencies of suspects being subject to arrest to come up with all kinds of nonsense about why they shouldn't be arrested that day. Dangerous job being a police officer. Yes. Are people unhappy about being arrested? Very rarely are they happy, said Mercil. Do suspects frequently engage in a wide variety of behaviors to avoid arrest, including fighting, arguing, and making excuses? Yes, they do, answered Mercil. Indeed, when asked if he himself had ever disbelieved a suspect's claim of a medical emergency in an apparent effort to avoid arrest, Mercil... Okay, uh, it's top of the hour. Oh, oh by the way, we're going to move on to some new Matt Gates news as well. That shit's fucking heating up. I wonder if Ben will defend Matt Gates as well. Um, surprised. He, I mean, he might. That'd be really cool. Uh, but uh, top of the hour, every hour, boys, we do a six second ad break. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to run the ad right now. I'm going to go pee. The video is going to keep going. If you want to ad free broadcasting experience, you know what to do. You can subscribe. You can subscribe for $5 a month. Uh, you get to send me, uh, you know, links and stuff. Or you can subscribe for free by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Twitch Prime a month. So, um, you know, get those primers out if you want to no longer see the ads or use a fucking ad blocker. Uh, here's the ad now. Okay. Russell answered, he had personally done so. All of this undercuts the part of the prosecution narrative that is relying on Floyd's purported pleas and excuses about claustrophobia and anxiety and crying out for his mother. Perhaps that's real, but a reasonable officer has to consider maybe it's an effort to avoid arrest. Nelson also, once again, put the use of pressure and body weight techniques in a favorable, favorable light. The state wants to present Chauvin's knee in a negative light, as deadly mechanical asphyxiation or as a blood choke, as attested to by this other witness, Derek Williams. In fact, however, the use of pressure and body weight to restrain a suspect was adopted by the MPD because it was a less intense use of force than prior practice of using strikes, either barehanded or with batons or even with weighted gloves to compel compliance. Mercil concurred. The take home message for the jury is that Chauvin's knee, far from being a public execution in a public street, was a lesser force than would otherwise have been required. 
so bottom line is this prosecution is not particularly going well for the prosecution. Nelson explored with Mercil whether there were circumstances in which it would be appropriate for an officer to maintain a neck restraint for a substantial period of time. Mercil said yes. Sometimes to maintain the neck restraint for however long it took EMS to arrive, asked Nelson. Mercil answered that he personally had maintained restraint on suspects for the duration required for EMS to arrive. The state's own use of force expert testified on cross. He personally had engaged in the exact same activity that Chauvin is currently being demonized for. That is not a good day for the state, as legal insurrection points out. So again, it was just a very, very bad day for the prosecution. The reason that I'm pointing this out is because what you're hearing from the media is that this is going to, that if Chauvin doesn't get convicted, it's a referendum on American racism. Cops are all bad, but fewer cops on the street. You think this is it's great, dude. He's, he's just, he's mad that, uh, you know, cops couldn't fucking find uh, a, a, uh, a dude with a clearer record on this. It's great. Wait, right wing TikToks are ruining my Since life. The dawn oh, that's fucking great. I will take a look at these right wing TikToks. Holy shit. Where the fuck was I? Oh, here it is. I love right wing TikToks. Um, doesn't Ben Shapiro have legal consultancy firm? If it wasn't pure grift, he'd offer the defense pro bono counsel massive puss. Well, why would you? Why would you uh, offer pro bono defense counsel to a uh, to a court case that you know is open and shut, and you are one thousand one million percent going to lose the fucking case? Like, it's it's insane. Uh, like he would, it would be the dumbest thing for him to do. I like that. I like that the uh, the argument from Ben Shabibo is literally though that uh, you know it's not open and shut. No, it's open and shut in the court of public opinion, and even in a legal, even from a legal point of view, it it seems very, very fucking. It seems really good on the on the uh, prosecutor's side, guys. Let's be fucking real. I mean. When you have the police chief, when you have the fucking police chief literally come out and speak out against uh, one of his own cops, it's a rip. It isn't going to backfire. It's going to backfire. It absolutely will backfire on the left because all they would have to do is say, listen, we're going to look at the facts of the case and we have a jury system for a reason. They can't do that. They have to say that this is deep American racism, regardless of whatever the evidence shows. And again, it wasn't just that it went badly for that state's witness. There's another state's witness, MPD officer Nicole McKenzie, who's the medical support coordinator. According to legal insurrection, McKenzie did really poorly. On direct, the prosecutor had McKenzie testify about how officers had a duty of care to suspects, that Chauvin had CPR and other training that would qualify him to provide emergency care, and that such care must be provided by the officer, even if an ambulance had already been called. Isn't it true, Nelson then asked McKenzie, that you train officers to consider not just the suspect, but the totality of the scene? She said yes. Isn't it true that police officers have a competing duty of safety to themselves, partners, bystanders, paramedics, to the point that if the scene is unsafe, if the officers haven't already announced a code for all safe, EMTs will stage a distance away? until they are told safety has been achieved? Yes, said McKenzie. Isn't it true safety concerns might not come from the suspect, from, but from the crowd? Yes. Okay, and by the way, the mob was there shouting at- The mob, aka more black people. It wasn't just a black suspect. There were also other black people around, guys. So the mob, he's literally verbatim vomiting out what the prosecution has tried to fucking say. So, I mean, uh, uh, what the defense has tried to say so far. He's literally just trying to do that. He, he is so great. It's great. I mean, that's it's why we have to evil shouting at Chauvin the entire time, which prevents the MTs from getting it. all of this. Yeah, no, I wonder why they were shouting at him. Oh, because they were witnessing a murder happening because that's what you're supposed to do. And they were fucking right, by the way. They were literally right. They were witnessing a murder happening and they were trying to stop the murder from happening. This generates at least a picture of reasonable doubt. All of this picture is at least the possibility of reasonable doubt. So it's, you know, none of this is going particularly well for the state. Yeah. The mob was so terrifying. They were, they were such a, they were such a, 
terrifying presence there that, you know, he had to murder extra hard, guys. That's, that's good. That's a good argument, I think. I think it's a good argument when you're, you know, you, you push the EMT away because of the mob. And, uh, and, and you, you fucking finish the job on your own extra hard. And if this results in more riots, if this results in more calls for the end of policing in America, it ain't going to go well for the left either. The, the left is overreaching on every area in American life right now. You knew it was coming. It is coming. And the backlash is going to be extremely strong. Facts don't care. Ben Shapiro is an expert on uh, body camera footage released of black man arrested while taking out trash. No, I'm not going to watch that. Biden announces his first executive. Okay, we're moving on to the Biden stuff. The United yes. States says Joe Biden is taking his first steps today on the issue of guns. And Boys, uh, Joe Biden, why, 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 Jack has uh, fucking some gun control on the docket, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, the Amazon Union election public vote count Zoom link just dropped. They're going to be letting people in at 1.45 p.m. CST. Uh, no recording screenshots or live streaming or broadcast of any kind will be allowed. Uh, of the uh, of the uh, live vote, obviously, so I'm not going to fuck it up. But uh, we got that coming, so you can't stream it. So don't fucking ask me to stream it. Um, I will give you a brief top line approach or top line analysis of the Biden first executive action on gun reforms. They include banning assault weapons, eliminating gun man manufacturing immunity, requiring background checks for guns bought at gun shows, which is closing the gun show loophole, of course. Uh, the, uh, third is, uh, or fourth is closing the Charleston loophole and the fifth is reauthorizing the violence against women, uh, act. In America, the executive actions include a call for federal reviews on some specific gun safety issues, but they're far short of the more sweeping changes that many of the Democrats want. Weisha Zhang is at the White House with more on this story. Weisha, good morning to you. Now, this is important because it comes after a series of mass shootings. What's, be, what's going to be announced today, do you think? Oh, good morning to you, Gail. President Biden is expected to launch a series of modest measures like directing the Justice Department to issue new rules and investing in community violence interventions. The White House stressed these are only initial steps because, Gail, frankly, there's only so much the president can do by himself Why he is urging lawmakers to do their part, too. Among the actions President Biden is taking to address gun violence, an order to review federal policy on so-called ghost guns, self-assembled weapons that require no serial numbers. Another would review the use of stabilizing braces on pistols, which turns them into short-barreled rifles. The president will also ask the Justice Department to draft model legislation to implement red flag laws at the state level to prevent people facing mental health issues from accessing firearms. President Biden Remember, the Trump administration said that they were going to do that. The Trump administration said that they were going to pursue red flag laws. Just so, just so you understand like where we're at currently. Biden also plans to nominate gun violence expert David Chipman as the next director of the ATF, an agency that has not had a permanent director since 2015. <laughs> I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps. Recent <sighs> the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment is the last line of defense against these bastard criminal cops who have a monopoly on violence. Dot dot dot. Inappropriate is the law libertarian in the chat, by the way. Um. So why do you status want to fuck with it? Gun ownership should be mandatory by all citizens. Literally mandatory, mandatory gun ownership. Who's going to enforce that? The government? How would you enforce mandatory gun ownership? Lolbertarian, one day, one day you will be able to come up with a fucking cohesive worldview that uh, makes sense. Mandatory gun ownership, he says. No, of course he's not fucking banned because he says the most idiotic things in the chat. So of course, that's the reason why I love having him in the chat. That's why I don't fucking ban him because he doesn't say like racist stuff usually. Uh, he just says like really funny stuff. As shootings like those in Georgia and Colorado have once again put gun violence front and center. As a candidate, Mr. Biden promised legislation including a ban on assault rifles. In fact, my first day of office, I'm going to... The Charleston loophole is when your background check has not been completed uh, in the uh, three days, they are um, uh, they they will uh, go around the background check system. Most of the background checks happen immediately, 
But um, 20 states in D.C. have laws that give authorities more than three business days to complete a background check. Um, in, uh, in uh, all the other states, background checks that are delayed more than three business days are four times more likely to be denied. But, um, but uh, if, it, if it takes more than three business days, they just uh, go around it. Why are you so red today? Uh, I went outside yesterday. Um, why are you against Americans being able to protect themselves from cops? The thing I always say, and uh, people fail to recognize this, is that gun control comes with uh, police gun control as well. Okay? I believe that uh, any sort of restrictive gun control measure has to be side-by-side -side paired up with uh, restrictions on cops as well. Like, I think everyone should have less guns. There should be more control and, and more regulation around uh, uh, guns. People that, uh, de only people that, who demonstrate that they can use a gun safely and securely and properly should be able to have a gun, like a driver's license, okay? And then you can move up classes too if you want to have like a fucking assault rifle, for example. You get a different, uh, you get a different, uh, if you get, if you want to get an AR-15, you get a different, uh, specification on your license. That's one. And two, um, it, uh, some people just should not be able to have guns. Okay. I, I'm forgetting what I was going to say. What about arming the proletariat? Yeah, I'm not some... I think it's just like uh, really fucking stupid. I, I find that really, I find that shit really, really, really dumb. So are you against Biden's executive action if it doesn't include cops? No, I'm not against Biden's executive action if it doesn't include cops because it's still one part of the fucking equation. And motherfuckers who think like, oh, I need a gun to protect myself against the police force are stupid. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. You don't get the fucking, it doesn't matter. Right now, as it stands, you will never be in a situation where you will be able to shoot a fucking cop in self-defense. Literally, look at the Breonna Taylor case. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, stop fucking jerking off about arming the proletariat so you can fucking defend yourself. Like, you're being insane. They can literally break into your fucking house in the middle of the night, shoot your fucking girlfriend, shoot you, and then you still go to jail unless it's made public that it was a horrific fucking injustice that occurred there. And even then you're vilified. Stop thinking this is Grand Theft Auto uh, role play over here. What's the use of assault rifles? Purely recreational. Assault rifles specifically, like long barrel assault rifles like AR-15s and the like, are purely recreational. They do not have any hunting purposes. They are not good for fucking self-defense. There are plenty of other guns that you could use for self-defense. The AR-15 and weapons like that are created exclusively because they are low recoil and they have a high, uh, uh, they have a, 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 a larger magazine that you can use on them and it's much easier to shoot them. A child or a woman can very easily shoot an AR-15. A, a person who has never shot a gun can much easily fucking shoot an AR-15. Uh, the fire rate's uh, higher too, low recoil, um, a good fire rate and much easier for, for, uh, weaker people to be able to fucking shoot it. Okay. That's what it's designed for. It's literally designed to kill multiple targets at once, uh, as easily as possible. Low recoil, easy to use equals bad for self-defense. Pepega. No, there are other guns that you can use for self-defense, like even a fucking shotgun. Do you want to murder your fucking neighbor because you used an AR-15? That's what I mean. Do you want to fucking murder your wife because you use an AR-15? Because it goes through and it fucking uh, it goes to the wall or some shit and, and kills your wife. You're a fucking idiot. Just use a bazooka, dude. Just use a fucking 50 cal. Uh, women and children could use them too. Low brain take. No, that's literally it. That's what. That's how it's sold to a lot of people. Is that this is the perfect weapon that you can use because even women and uh, uh, children can use it.
Low recoil, long range. That was the design behind it. Yes. And and you can use that you can kill multiple targets at a time. The only fucking self-defense instance that would require an AR-15 over a shotgun or a fucking pistol. Are you ready for this? The only self-defense instance that would literally require you to use an AR-15 instead of a shotgun or a pistol is, or uh, or any sort of like, you know, single fire fucking uh, uh, rifle that you would use when you're hunting or anything like that, is if you had a death squad invading your home. You had multiple assailants coming in and you had multiple targets that you needed to kill. And they were coming in from a long enough distance that you saw them from ahead of time like a fucking rebel army and you have your AR-15 and you're perched up and you're just fucking clapping this death squad, okay? That's the only instance where an AR-15 would be better than like a bolt action or a shotgun or a pistol or whatever the fuck people used to use in the very, very low chances that you have a home invasion or some shit and you need to defend yourself. What happens more frequently is accidental gun deaths because of accidental discharge or you fucking end up shooting yourself in the toe or your baby fucking kills you because you sh your baby fucking shoots you in the face. What happens way more frequently is people committing suicide because they have a gun at home and, and it's uh, easier for them to use it with. Sorry, trigger warning. What happens way more frequently is if you have a gun and you pull it out because you're trying to defend yourself, but you're a fucking idiot, you have your gun stolen, and now, boom, you basically gave a criminal a gun that they can use in, in doing other crimes. You just leveled up a criminal, okay? Having a gun in an altercation makes it way more likely to fucking uh, 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 turn the altercation more deadly, more violent. That's just the way the mafia works, boys, okay? That happened to me in RP last night? Yeah, sorry. That was probably me and Raymond. Someone was doing a fucking oxy run and they had guns. So I stole their gun and I could, so that I could use their gun because I don't have a gun license in a video game. So yes, when we rob people, we take guns off of them so we can have guns. Here's the difference, okay? Unlike most people that present themselves on the left or liberals or whatever, I'm honest with you. I like guns. I like shooting guns. I think shooting guns are fucking fun, okay? I think guns are kind of cool. They're kind of poggers. I will admit that to you, okay? But ultimately, they're a fucking hobby, okay? They are a murder dildo. It doesn't have any utility beyond ending organic life. You can't fucking light your cigarette with a gun. You can't fucking ride your gun to work. You can't... Uh, I don't know, cook your food with a gun. You can't do any of those things. It has zero utility beyond ending organic life, okay? That's all it does. But it's a lot of fun when you're shooting targets and shit. Self-defense the utility is an idiotic fucking counterpoint because it doesn't actually provide you, like, any legitimate reason when you have self-defense. We don't live in the fucking... We don't live in the Wild West. You don't need... Uh, a situation where you like literally have to fucking do self-defense and even if you wanted to do self-defense there are plenty of guns that you could actually use to do self-defense that are better than the ar-15 unless you want to again blow through your fucking drywall and murder your wife i already went on a long fucking uh tangent describing why ar-15s are not the best argument or not the best fucking gun for a home defense At least admit it, you like shooting a murder dildo. It makes you feel powerful. It makes you feel like you got a big fucking throbbing cock. You got a second cock in your hand, okay? That's what it is. That is all that it is. The Senate bill of the Congress repealing, repealing the liability protection for gun manufacturers closing the background check loopholes and waiting period. 
Moderate Democrats like West Virginia's Joe Manchin have signaled they will not support the sweeping reforms his more liberal colleagues want. It is time for Congress to act and stop. On the CBS This choices. Morning last month, Vice President Kamala Harris said President Biden is prepared to act, but urged Congress to take. Yeah, not to mention shooting at everything indoors. No ear uh, pro is like flashbang yourself, but that's that's the same for most guns, brother. That's like. That shit is loud as fuck regardless, dude. If you don't have fucking, if you don't have any ear protection, no matter what gun you're shooting, it's going to fucking blow your eardrum out. It's not, but it's going to be very fucking loud. Pick up the issue. I served in that body, and I believe that it is possible, it has to be possible, that people agree that these slaughters have to stop. The NRA is slamming President Biden's plans. Literally, really, the only home defense firearms, a shotgun, a handgun, is so dangerous to the wielder in close quarters because it can easily be turned against them. Yep, and they aren't great at distance because accuracy for the average user drops off massively after 30 feet. The only real use of a handgun is for target practice or... Okay, the second part, yeah. Um, yes, a 9mm shot indoors with no ear protection fucks you up. I know, I've shot all these fucking guns, boys. Unless you have, like, uh, what's the fucking German gun that uh, sharpshooters use in competition? I always fuck it up. Is it a Luger or a Ruger? I don't know if it's with an L or an R. I always fuck it up. Those guns, are, the Luger is, like, they, they, those are very precise, but you're not going to be able to fucking kill anyone with it. Uh, you're not even going to, you, you might be able to put a dent in someone, but um, it's very good. It's a very good gun. Luger more accurate, Ruger for show. Luger's blow up after two shots, LMAO. Ruger is the 22 LR target pistol. Yeah. It's very good. It's the most precise handgun I've ever shot. Out of all the handguns that I've shot. Do you really need accuracy over 30 feet for self-defense? Um, I've always pronounced it as a Ruger, but in America, it's Luger. But I think R Luger and Ruger are both German handguns. Lugers aren't made anymore, but Rugers are made in that same style. Okay, that's okay. Anyway, so... The point I was trying to make is if you're if you're against the shit that I'm saying, if you're against the shit that I'm arguing, you're literally a bad gun owner. Like you are you are the problem, okay? Cuz nothing I'm arguing for is ridiculous. Like having a license and registration, appropriate license and registration for firearms is a necessity. Law-abiding gun owners who constantly fucking talk about like, "Oh, you shouldn't punish law-abiding law gun owners," should literally recognize that what I'm saying is for law-abiding gun owners, okay? Oh. I find it really strange that uh, people, yeah, ex-NFL player Philip Adams dead by suicide after killing five in South Carolina. Yeah, this happened last night. I worked at a liquor store. We had two guys with guns trained. One guy shot the roof of the deli area for fun. The other disappeared when there was an active shooting in our parking lot. I felt more weary of our guns. Yeah. Uh, for the record, like, I mean, it's the same shit. You have cops who are fucking trained for uh, using their weapons in a moment's notice when they have to, and they fucking run away. Look, it happens. Also, the other thing is, as far as price point goes, guns are just, it's, it's literally the same as a Gucci bag, okay? Guns are closest to uh, people that fucking go out and buy Gucci bags and like Gucci fucking belts and shit like that. They are similar in price. The only difference is like Gucci gives you extra swag, okay? And uh, it, you can't really kill someone. It would be very difficult to kill someone with a Gucci belt. Like, you'd have to fucking wrap it around their fucking neck and shit like that. So, you know, just letting you know. Like, when motherfuckers are like, oh, I have this gun for safety. It's like, no, you don't. You have it because 
you don't want to buy a Gucci belt. You want you're you're a gun weeb. You're just a gun weeb. Everything you've suggested is already placed. Oh, okay. Then the Biden administration is not actually doing anything. Then maybe you should shut the fuck up about it. It's already in place. So Biden's executive orders are not actually uh, going to do anything, I guess. AR-15 is one shot at a time. Oh my God, dude. No way. I had no idea. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Your gun takes are hotter garbage than the surface of the sun. Okay. What about the people who simply own one handgun? Like, what would happen to them, you think? If you simply own one handgun, what do you think is going to happen to you exactly? Do you think people are going to come into your fucking house and be like, Oh, well, I heard this guy has one handgun. Like, no one is trying to take your fucking family, uh, uh, your, your, your family's, like, bolt-action rifle away, okay? It's so fucking stupid that people literally think, like, oh, you know, Barack Obama's president. I guess literally my fucking, uh, my, my hangout that I've shot, like, only in the range is going to be taken from me. You're so stupid. Wouldn't someone with one handgun still need to be safe, responsible gun owners? Why the fuck do Yanks, uh, this, everyone's trying to get them? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal is. Can we also talk about how the more expensive guns are probably going to end up in the hands of people with money and not those underprivileged peoples? Yeah, I, I, I know. But, uh, people constantly fucking make the argument that, like, more gun laws is going to be disproportionately targeting black people. Well, okay, then fucking abolish all laws then. The criminal justice system is racist. And, yes... Every fucking law oftentimes is utilized and targeted towards uh, black and brown people. But that doesn't mean that we can't fucking that doesn't mean that we can't have reasonable legislation or reasonable gun control measures uh, in place. I'm seeing lefties on Twitter talk about how gun control is anti-black. I know we already I already mentioned it. I already mentioned that I was just uh, addressing that currently. Okay. Saying that they could require law-abiding citizens to surrender lawful property. The association promises to fight. But gun control advocates like the group Every Town for Gun Safety say this is a victory that will save lives. Tony. Damn. Timujin says, Chad, I graded your essay. Pause champ, you failed, Pago. You failed, chat. You fucking failed. Your essay sucked. Okay, here is uh, you know the entire statement from earlier actually i don't want to watch this is sleeper as fuck we already talked about it okay uh donald trump has officially broken his silence on matt gates let's see and battle congressman matt gates is now getting a boost from former president trump who just released a statement insisting they never discussed a preemptive pardon gates is fending off a federal sex trafficking investigation uh, and allegations he had a fucking owned fucking owned boys Absolutely owned. That is not looking good. It is not looking good for Matt Gates, dude. Change your subtitle language. Wait, what the fuck is it right now? It's English CC1. What the fuck you mean? Sexual relationship with a 17-year-old girl. CNN congressional correspondent Ryan Nobles has the latest. Tonight, in battled Congressman Matt Gates in search of support and getting a returned favor from the man he spent years defending and praising. President Trump sometimes raises his voice and a ruckus. He knows that's what it takes to raise an army of patriots who love America and will protect her. You got so fucked, bitch. Oh, that's so... That's so funny. Former that, like... President Donald Trump weighing in publicly for the first time on the scandal surrounding one of his most loyal allies on Capitol Hill. Trump responding to reports confirmed by CNN that the Florida congressman approached allies to the president requesting a preemptive blanket pardon for himself before Trump left the White House. Trump today denying Gates ever asked him personally for a pardon 
and then saying, quote, it must be remembered that he has totally denied the accusations against him. It is a horrible allegation, and it is a... Listen, Tucker, if I can't be a libertarian and express my genuine political opinions by dating a 17-year-old, potentially, allegedly, then what in goddamn America, Tucker? I mean, this is the most... This is the quintessential libertarian, American libertarian practice that you want to abolish? Tucker, might I also suggest that I am white? And uh, when brown people do it, of course we are completely against it. But when a white person such as myself does it, Tucker, you should be rushing to my defense, as you have done in the past. Tucker Carlson's literally done that, by the way. He's literally done that. To like a white pedophile fucking Christian, I forget what the dude's name was. But he straight up defended uh, uh, someone who, who like was a cult leader back in the day. A lie. Saying, oh, he's just weird. Who was it? Does anyone remember? No, not Roy Moore. No, no, no. Roy Moore, of course. But this is a worse, even worse than Roy Moore. Who the fuck was it? No, 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 no. This was a cult leader. This was a cult leader. It, it happened a while ago. I, I covered it. I wrote about it. I don't remember the name now. Fuck. David. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Koresh. Warren Jeffs, I think. Yeah, I think that it was. Warren Jeffs. Warren Jeffs. Warren Jeffs. Yes, 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 yes. Fucking business insider. Come on, business. You got, no be you got no business being inside of me like this. In past segments, Tucker Carlson defended relations between teens, adults, and called out Samantha B for saying cunt. Uh, tapes of Fox News, Tucker Carlson degrading women, making blah, 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 blah. Where was it? Warren Jeffs. Yeah. This was polygamous sect leader Warren Jeffs. Um, Tucker Carlson defended him, saying he's just weird. I can't believe they're trying to arrest him for being weird. Something along those lines. Anyway. Matt, how you doing? In his short time in Washington, the Florida congressman has gone out of his way. How did I get past the paywall so easily? How did I get past that? Hold on one second. So I'm a fucking hacker, bitch. It's called hacker man's. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm in. I got through. <laughs> uh, I'm so stupid. I'm literally the stupidest person. Oh yeah, here. This is how, dude. This is wait, what the fuck? Where This is how, dude. I was doing fucking hacker man shit. You see that? I'm literally inside the mainframe right now. Fuck, that was easy, boys. I rerouted the, uh... I rerouted the photogenic software back to, uh, CyberFrame. And, uh... And from that point on, it's easy-peasy, you know what I mean? I just, uh, I just DDoSed their, uh, mainframe. And, um... Hacked their, uh, API with my uh, XY uh, software. <laughs> uh, you did that with only one person on the keyboard? You really are next level dank hacker mans? Yeah. Okay, Hasi, the alphabet soup of computer words. Dude, when I'm talking about computer shit, I literally sound like a fucking 
a guy trying to LARP as a, as a, as a person who knows what they're talking about at the mechanic. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I did the analytic carburetor and, uh, you know. Attach himself to Trump, as demonstrated in the 2020 HBO documentary, The Swamp. Hey, Mr. President, it's Matt Gates. I don't need anything, sir. Just calling to tell you, you did a great job today. Don't let these people get you down. I love that the first thing Donald Trump says when Matt Gates is calling is, what do you want? What do you want? What, are you, what is it now? We're going to keep fighting for you with all we got. Gates defending Trump, even when some Republicans were unwilling. My fellow patriots, don't be shy and don't be sorry. Join me as we proudly represent the pro-Trump America first wing of the conservative movement. Madam Speaker, Gates went to the House floor after the deadly insurrection and claimed without evidence that it was groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa to blame for the violence, not Trump. This morning, President Trump explicitly called for demonstrations and protests to be peaceful. He was far more, you can moan and groan, but he was far more explicit about his calls for peace than some of the BLM and left-wing rioters were this summer when we saw- Motherfucker, why are you asking me how I fucking went through the paywall when you can literally look at the video? Like, just look at what I did. I did it in front of your eyes. And I did it very, very slowly. I moved my mouse cursor. Like, just, just look at the video and you'll find out. A violent sweep across this nation. During the former president's first Unless the banner covered it. Gates and a group of- Good. Then, at that point, I think, my friend, you're going to have to do a... I think at that point, my friend, you're going to have to do a cybernetic curb carburetor. My secrets are my own. And no one else's. Keep going. House Republicans busted into a secure meeting in an attempt to reveal classified information about the investigation into Trump's conduct. If behind those doors they intend to overturn the results of an American presidential election, we want to know what's going on. And it's only reasonable that we would have questions. <laughs> He has also battled his fellow Republicans, those he deems not loyal. This is great because, like, it's a buildup. It's an intense buildup of, like, uh, this is how much Matt Gates sucked Donald Trump's asshole, okay? Sucked the juices directly out of his asshole, uh, only to get uh, fucked in the end and, and uh, left out the dry. Loyal enough to the Trump it's MAGA great. movement. Gates traveled to Wyoming to attack fellow GOP representative Liz Cheney who voted to impeach like the build up is after intense. the insurrection. You can send a representative who actually represents you, and you can send Liz Cheney home, back home to Washington, D.C. And while former President Trump is offering Gates a modicum of support, it is far from enthusiastic. In fact, sources tell CNN that the former president is being advised to stay away from the Gates scandal. Meanwhile, the congressman showing no signs of backing away. He has sent out multiple fundraising appeals based on this scandal. And Wolf, he's expected to reappear in public for the first time on Friday, speaking at a summit that will be held, of course, at Trump National Golf Course in Doral, Florida. Wolf. Ryan Nobles uh, with the latest from Capitol Hill. Thanks very much. Let's get some analysis from our senior legal analyst, Preet Bharara, and our chief political correspondent, Dana Bash. Uh, you know, Preet, uh, you think this is, this is something uh, that an innocent person would typically do, typically behave like this? Ah! Uh, no. <laughs> and the typical innocent person, uh, and the typical guilty person for that matter, doesn't have a close relationship uh, with the president at the time of the United States of America. And it's an example of uh, the culture that was created in the White House, that if you want to pardon, if you're Roger Stone, if you're Michael Flynn, if you're someone who's close to the president, that maybe you could get away with criminal activity, on the federal level at least, and get a, a you know, get out of jail free card for it because you had a relationship to the president. The fact that Matt Gates, according to the New York Times and other sources, was lobbying for this broad, preemptive, sweeping pardon without any particular charges being brought, without any reporting of an investigation even being done, though he might have had some knowledge of it, 
to me is, is what the lawyers call consciousness of guilt. You know you've done something wrong. You want to get protection for it. Here's a president who's been handing out pardons right and left. Maybe I should get one, too. You know, it's interesting, Dan, because uh, Trump, in his statement, he specifically said uh, Congressman Matt Gates has never asked me for a pardon. Very specifically, he says never asked him. Uh, not that he never asked for a pardon from the White House, from other officials. Uh, carefully chosen words, I suspect. No question. Uh, that was very, very intentional. And, you know, just a reminder that for people who didn't read uh, the New York Times story, which broke this, and, and CNN's subsequent uh, reporting on this very issue, there was no um, reporting specifically that said the, the ask went directly to the president. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't clear. So thank you the, to the former president for, for clearing that up, but leaving a very, very gaping hole in in the uh notion of gates actually asking i can't wait okay let's hear the gotchis oh i knew it i knew it was coming as soon as she said gaping hole dude people in and around the former president um <sighs> it was definitely confirmation by omission from i the was way drinking cold brew yes it. yeah the way that statement was uh, written you know preet uh, the new york times also reports that some trump associates uh, have theorized that, that gates's decision to seek pardons uh, for multiple people may have been a way to disguise his own potential legal exposure. What do you make of that? It's a weird strategy, it seems to me. On the one hand, <clears throat> if it turns out, <clears throat> excuse me, if it turns out that he was trying to get coverage for criminal conduct that he was liable for because of this investigation and the indictment of his um, associate, uh, Joel Greenberg in Florida, yeah, sure. You bring in some other congressman and you say, you know, there's a group of us who have been um, sort of had witch hunts launched against them vaguely by the public uh, and, and might be by future Democratic administrations. So give us all a pardon. On the other hand, it also made it more remote, the likelihood that even, even that White House, even the Trump White House, which was pretty generous with pardons, was going to willy-nilly just sort of pick a group of sitting United States congressmen and give them preemptive blanket seen as pardons without specifics. So you know, I, I get it, I guess, on, on one level. Uh, on another level, I really, really don't get it. You know, it's interesting, Dana, because uh, Trump may have released this uh, very short I got a pee again. Hold on. little statement on paper. Uh, There's some updates coming in, too, as well. There's a uh, live from the courthouse, Joel Greenberg, an associate of Representative Matt Gates is expected to take a plea in a criminal case, likely requiring half to share what he knows about Gates. Uh, and also on top of that, the Gates office just offered names of women who have signed on to the statement. Uh, the women of Matt Gates basically uh, declaring his innocence. Hold uh, on, I got to pee. His Republican colleagues uh, in Congress are essentially silent right now. What does that say to you? The sound of that silence is quite deafening uh, because there is a virtually, with, with notable exceptions, Jim Jordan, who is also a staunch uh, defender for no matter what, goes will go to the to the. Uh, nth degree to support uh, President Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, for the most part, uh, there has been crickets, except for Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader, who said that they were going to have a conversation. We don't know if that conversation has ever taken place. And also said that if Matt Gates is, is indicted, if there are actual charges uh, brought against him, then he would have to be uh, removed from the Judiciary Committee on which he sits. The one thing I will remind you, Wolf, is that Congress has been on recess since this whole thing exploded. And it is a very different dynamic, a very different atmosphere when these lawmakers, particularly Republicans in leadership, are walking in the hallways, you know, in front of cameras trying to talk about their agenda and their message, and they get questions from reporters. And so my question is whether or not that is going to change the dynamic, also whether more reporting is going to come out that would add to that. Where, where do you think, Preet, uh, this goes from here? Because uh, I suspect that one... Uh, what the fuck are you guys doing, dude? Why are you... Stop sucking dicks, chat. What the fuck? Potential nightmare scenario for Gates is if his uh, associate, who's already been charged, flips, cooperates, tries to get some sort of plea agreement, pleads guilty in hopes of getting a reduced sentence, decides to speak out against his friend, uh, G Congressman Gates. Yeah, so there's a lot of speculation about that, and I think it's reasonable speculation. You have a person who has a number of charges that keep getting added to his indictment. He's facing a very substantial prison term if he's convicted at trial or he pleads guilty. 
And in that situation, as we've learned over the last number of years, the best way to help yourself is to provide substantial assistance about some other person who the federal government might think is a substantial target. And any sitting congressman who takes a, an oath to all... Well, Joel Greenberg is a fucking creepazoid in and of itself. You know what I mean? Constitution and is a position of trust is such a target. And there are questions about whether or not Matt Gates used public funds to engage in some of this um, you know, sexual misconduct that's been alleged but not proven. So, yeah, I think it's a dire situation for Matt Gates, And I think we'll find out relatively soon if his associate has, in fact, flipped. Okay, so uh, here is the uh, additional Reed. update. Joining me now. So, Paula, what more do we know about this? Erica, this is some potentially bad news for Congressman Matt Gates and his ongoing sex crimes investigation. As you just noted, in court just moments ago, the Justice Department and defense attorneys for one of Gates's closest friends and political allies signaled that that close friend and political ally, Joel Greenberg, dude, is likely this. to strike a plea deal to resolve. Wait, I got to show you guys this. Hold on. Look at this, dude. Look at how red my fucking arm is, dude. It's so terrible. Sorry, I just wanted to show you white boy summer. All the for dozens seconds. of federal criminal counts he is currently facing. That is significant for Congressman Gates because it means that his friend and ally would likely have to provide any evidence of criminal wrongdoing uh, that he is aware of against his friend. Now, it was interesting. They said the government said that they thought that this could all be resolved in a month, but the defense attorney for Mr. Greenberg said, nope, not so fast. And both sides, Erica, acknowledged. It's possible they may not be able to come to a plea deal. It's possible they won't be able to come to any kind of agreement. But right now, Congressman Gates uh, is likely concerned. One of his closest friends and allies uh, will now likely have to cooperate with the government. And it's interesting. The investigation into Congressman Gates actually began with a larger sex trafficking investigation uh, where his close ally, Joel Greenberg, uh, has been implicated. And again, he's facing dozens of criminal counts. So a lot of incentive for him to provide anything Thing he knows to the Justice Department. Yep. Okay, so there's a new statement from the women of U.S. Congressman Matt Gates's office defending him. No actual names attributed to the statement, but it was sent from his chief staff, uh, Jillian Wyatt's email. Remember, his uh, main comms director left uh, last week. Gates's office has now offered the names of the women who have signed on to the statement. It's uh, Jillian Lane Wyant, Dawn McArdle, Isabella Belchior, and Allison Thomas. Uh, they're saying after the shocking allegations. Uh, last week of the press, we, the women of Congressman Matt Gates' office, feel morally obligated to speak out during Congressman Gates' time in the office. We've been behind the scenes every step of the way. We've staffed his meetings. We've planned his events. We've traveled them, and we've tracked his schedule. Congressman Gates has always been a principled and morally grounded leader. At no time has any of us uh, experienced or witnessed anything less than the utmost professionalism and respect. No hint of impropriety. No ounce of untruthfulness. Now, of course... Um, woman, man, camera, TV, doesn't fucking matter if you work with Matt Gates. then you're already, uh, you know, halfway there to being a demon henchman. And, uh, understandably, if you're a Republican fucking congress per, uh, congressman's, uh, uh, staffer, then you're going to probably work with other, uh, uh, Republicans in the future. And this is literally like, you're, this is a bona fide for you. Like, you are building up your resume by coming out and defending Matt Gates like this. this like, you know, so you can go work with another creepy perverted fucking uh republican congressperson so yeah you know of course they were going to say this so congratulations to the women i mean that's real feminism right there by the way uh also the other reason uh why uh they might have felt comfortable is because you know they were over the age of 18 uh, who knows i'm just saying like they might have been over the age of 18 and that's precisely why matt gates was not interested uh, in them in the same way so Okay, these women are too old for him anyways, not surprising. Exactly. Um, every occasion he's treated each and every one of us with respect, thus we uniformly reject the allegations as false. Again, you're working for a Republican congressperson, so uh, the irony there is, like, when you're working for a Republican congressperson and you don't even put your name on the letter, which is pretty funny uh, originally, but then you come out after the fact and say you did, but... Uh, like, if you're working for a Republican congressperson, like, you're, you're already, like, you know, you're already working for someone who is, like, very actively trying to limit uh, what women can and can't do to their own bodies. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're already fucking fighting against uh, the autonomy that women have over their own body, the control that women have over their own, own body. Uh, so, 
it doesn't really matter. Like, <laughs> after that point, it's like, what are you going to do? It doesn't fucking matter if you say, like, well, the guy who is actively and deliberately trying to stop women from getting abortions is actually fucking, uh, you know, really, really respectful uh, to women. Okay. Tucker Carlson clashed with the Arkansas governor over the trans, uh, the youth uh, uh, gender reassignment bill. Not interested in that. Uh, there's a, there was a fucking uh, tensions rising.